It seems that the Valley Dwellers are divided into two factions. They call each other the Pirates and the Pioneers. Both camps similarly respect the word of some teacher, but seem to differ in its interpretation. The Pirates are more aggressive, while the Pioneers more isolationist. Get ready for the 
Trying to beat it now when you got me on your case. I see the fucking bastard! Fuck! I'm laying low for now. I see the fucking bastard! There he is, that fucker! I got the big kill! There he is, that fucker!
so you're not one of them, I see. Uh, thanks for saving us, stranger. Uh, thank you. Oh, damn, friend. How did it even come out this way? Well, you're at the final exam now. You'll pass it with flying colors, I know it. When you see the teacher, tell him. Tell him we will survive. Like he taught us.
Drizzt Drifter. So, we meet again. Though I bet you don't remember who dragged you out of the water. My name is Olga, by the way. Was it you fighting the master of the forest? Awesome. Our hunters had been staying away from him for years. Damn it. Sorry, teacher. The locks all rusted up. Your friend Alyosha is already at the dam. He said your cardinal won't wait, so you don't have much time. Sorry, I can't take you there. At today's council session, the pirates moved to attack your train. But they had no right to even call one without me present. As usual, I need to go and sort this out. But I have a few minutes to give you some directions. You need a boat to get to the dam. And our pirates keep all the boats at their swamp camp. They are not the sharing kind. But that's no reason to attack. Nobody wants bloodshed. So just stay out of their sight. Take the road to the barricade. Go down to the swamp and find the dock. That's where Alyosha and I took the boat from. Did you forgive me? There are some left, but be careful. Well, Drifter, take care. And don't make me sorry I helped you people. Tell Alyosha I said hi. I'll stay a bit longer to tend to the grave of the teacher. Decided to relax a bit before the trip. That's a good idea. And I am stuck in thought here. Once the master decided to haunt the vicinity, people all but stopped coming here. Though they haven't forgotten. The teacher raised us all. Taught us how to survive in the forest. If not for him, we'd all be long dead. So, the girls used to come here every day, and the boys still make it from time to time. Even Roman does visit, though it was because of him that the teacher left back then. Most of us went on a trip down the river. There were just a few people left on duty in the camp. When we came back, we found it raided by bandits. It still pains me to remember the scene. Can't even describe it. Once we and the younger group were done crying, the teacher was digging the graves alone. The elder boys were nowhere to be seen. We helped the teacher with burying ours. It was dark already when the boys returned and sat around the campfire. Roman was so covered with blood. You could only see his eyes and teeth. Then they started talking. Tracking was easy. The bandits didn't even try covering their tracks. So the boys waited till they all got drunk in their camp and shot them with bows. Then Roman knifed the wounded like they were deer. The teacher just sat there listening. I can still see his chin tremble. And he didn't say anything. Anything at all. They understood what he meant anyway. <laughs> Come morning he was gone. To this church. At first he wouldn't speak to anyone. But us girls kept checking up on him just to bring him some berries, or ask for advice, and gradually he started speaking to us. Still he was like a different man, so distant. He never talked to the older boys anymore, though he'd reply to their letters, and to the rest of us who'd keep visiting him, he would always say we had to become their conscience keeps them from becoming monsters. But how do you do that? And they didn't stop at that either. Started calling themselves pirates, made the floated lumber mill in the swamp their private HQ. Then, they started hanging bandits from the posts. 
calling them musts. One day they took about ten bandits alive and used them to test all the boys. Made them kill the bastards. None of ours could do it. And they all got called cowards for that. And then got ostracized. That's how the pioneers came to be. Of course, they all calmed down by now. They are talking to each other, at least. But back then, only Luda and I could speak for the teacher at the council meetings. In the end, Luda and a few boys just couldn't take it anymore and left. I wonder if they found a better place to live. I still keep checking the radio, hoping to hear from them. The teacher hoped too, but that hope didn't last long. They left in July, and in September he shot himself. That seemed to get through to Roman. He got calmer. Some of the elder guys went over to the pioneers. After all, the important thing is that we stay together. So... So now I have an important voice at the council. Cause I can kick ass if they don't listen. And not just because they are not supposed to hurt girls. A fair fight is a fair fight. Thing is, the only one I lost to in a fair fight was Roman. And even then, I gave him a blue eye he had to wear for a week. <laughs> that earned his respect. The one I had the most trouble with was the Admiral. He was Roman's right-hand man. Wouldn't leave the lumber mill no matter what. Kept saying we must defend it, if we don't want the mutants to eat the whole valley. But the radiation levels kept climbing there. Roman checked it with the counter himself. So at one council meeting, Roman and our instructors had everyone vote against the Admiral, and the pirates went on to build a new fort near the shore, where it's still okay to stay. The Admiral would have none of that, so he and his most hardcore flunkies stayed at the mill. I never heard from them again. Radiation's not to be played with. The teacher didn't warn us all for nothing. So now, without the Admiral, there is nobody who dare give me any trouble in the Council. I'll put a leash on them tonight, all right. Don't you worry. I just need some time to gather my thoughts. I don't like politics, really. You could listen to the teacher's diary if you like. He kept recording it. As if he knew. Yes. I must have heard it hundred times already and still... We let him down. We really did. The radio's silent. My last hope for giving them a positive goal, leading them out of this forest dead end, was a complete fluke. Where did I go wrong? How could these great, talented, active, brave, honest, friendly children who would actively seek justice turn into monsters. Sure, I'm no Pestalozzi, but I did all I could. And even more, I gave them all my soul, my life. And uh, what did that result in? A society of shut-ins who only respect strength and are no less cruel than the bandits they fight. Yes, some of them kept their purity, shrugged off the bad influence and ended up leaving. I gave them all the fuel I had. But how few they were. Most changed. Could it be that in this world that routinely changes even the harmless animals into nightmarish freaks? Mankind simply has no future? What is there to hope for? What's the point of even going through the motions anymore? Well, at tonight's council session I'm going to remind them all what the teacher thought in the end. 
I'll give them a piece of my mind. Did the teacher save us all so that we could just attack people? Defending ourselves is one thing, but attacking? They can't deny that, and we'll have to stand down. Those pirates. Oh, boys.
Yeah, the bastard wants a boat. Take him down. We count to five. 